What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It's definitely not the nicest day we've ever had in the garden, but it is a day nonetheless. It's raining and it's a little chilly, but the rain is the only thing that's gonna make this video pretty quick because my camera is not waterproof. But uh, I had to get out here and talk about something that a lot of you have been writing in asking for me to do a video on, and that's, Luke, what do I do next once I get my plants in the mail? For those of you that don't know, we sold plants over at migardener.com. For the first time ever, we sold uh, dormant plants. It was a very fun experience. Definitely are going to be doing it again. It was so fun to be able to sell high quality plants at a low cost to people all around the country. It was just so cool and so motivating to see. So aside from seeds, which we do still have, um, we sold plants. Now the plants are sold out because uh, there's a a season that you can sell them, the dormancy season. You have to sell them before the plants break dormancy, otherwise you risk losing them. So we had to, you know, it's a very small window of time. So we had to get them in and get them out. So unfortunately we are sold out, but a lot of you have been writing in uh, now that you've been receiving them, Luke, what do I do next? And so this video will apply to not only the, the plants that we sent to all of you, but if you got plants from elsewhere as well, um, and you're getting those, this, the same thing will apply. What we want to talk about is how to plant or what to do once you receive your your bare root plants bare root is the process of growing a plant uh, well the grower grows a plant pulls it up out of the soil uh, washes the soil off as it's still dormant and then ships it to you they do that for two reasons one soil is very heavy and it's very costly to ship heavy things through the mail the next reason is a lot of states require you to ship bare root because they don't want what's called hitchhikers. Now hitchhikers are basically just a, a fun term for uh, invasive plants that can hitch a ride on whatever you're shipping. And so uh, that's, why, um, you know, that's why fruit and certain things can't be shipped across uh, state lines or you know, country to country. That's why um, you know, with things like bare root, you have to have the soil washed off unless you have certain ex exemptions. So a lot of times growers will just sell their stuff bare root because it's a lot less hassle. And so when you receive your plants, a lot of people panic because it looks like the plant is completely dead. And it's not, it's actually just dormant. So that's the first thing that you want to do is realize that, uh, that the plant is just dormant. The first way that you can tell that your plant is dormant and not dead, because they kind of look the same, <laughs> I can be honest and admit that, they both look dead, even though one might not be and it might just be dormant. And it's a really simple way, and it's just by clipping the tip off of the, off of the end. If you clip the tip off the end of the plant, regardless of what it is, and it has some green still in it, that means that the, the, the plant tissue is still alive. It's just dormant. So it's a very easy way to figure that out. And it won't be a dark green. It's just going to be a, kind of like a light green. And it'll also be softer to the touch. It won't be uh, really dry and brittle. brittle. So um, just keep that in mind. That's a really quick way to just kind of see right off the bat. Also, you're going to find that the roots are dry. The roots dry out over time, but if they've been shipped properly in a nice humid bag, uh, they should retain some of that root moisture, which is the very important thing because that's the kind of the life, the heart of the plant. And so that's what pumps water and nutrients up to the, up to the plant to help it break dormancy. So the next thing you want to do is after you uh, get the plant and you assess that it is still alive, what you want to do is you want to dunk it in water very important. I take all of my plants out and I put them in a big bu uh, bucket or a bowl of water and that way they can soak. And you want to soak them like that for about two hours. You don't want to soak them for long periods of time because then you run the risk of, of rot and mold forming. But I soak mine for at least two hours and, uh, and I, I like to soak them in just moderately warm water. 65 to 70 degree water is what I prefer. And that way it helps the, the roots absorb that moisture. It's not cold, it's not too much shock, but it helps them absorb that moisture because that moisture is going to be critical to helping them break dormancy. So once I've let them soak, which I've done, I bring them outside and it is imperative to get them planted within, within hours of you soaking them. You don't want to let them dry out again. That will be really bad for the plant health. So what you want to do is after you soak them, I just bring them right out in the bowl of water, right out to the garden where I'm going to plant them. And this will apply to anything. It doesn't matter if it's strawberries, asparagus, blackberries, uh, raspberries, gooseberries, even apple trees, pear trees, fruit trees, and the like. Anything that is dormant and bare root, you want to soak it. You want to soak it so that it can absorb the moisture and then you want to plant it immediately after. You don't want it sitting around for days after that. A lot of people ask, well, what if, you know, what if I can't plant? My garden's not quite ready yet. 
put them in a pot of soil. Grab a pot, throw some potting mix in, just get them in some soil. That is the most important thing, and then get them in some sunlight. Once they're in the sunlight, they're gonna break dormancy in uh, when it's ready for them. But usually that's about a week or two, uh, that's about a week or two from being in the soil. So it won't happen immediately. So don't freak out if it doesn't happen immediately. It takes time, it's a patience thing. And so uh, a lot of people, they write in saying, it's been a couple days and my plants still look dead. Well, it takes time. And then they write back a week later and they're like, scratch that, things are happening. So <laughs> Gardening is a patience hobby. It takes time with everything. So uh, they will take some time, but um, yeah, get them in the soil no matter what. All right, check it out. Let's get these in the ground because uh, I wanna get some asparagus growing. All right, let's go. All right, so it's super simple. With asparagus, all we wanna do, these have kind of started to break dormancy a little bit. This is definitely not common. We waited a little bit too long to get these to get this video out to you guys, but uh, they started sprouting inside the bag. Not a bad thing, it's just like, you know, potato sets. You know, sometimes your potato sets start growing those eyes super long. They're still plants nonetheless. As long as your root system is nice and uh, nice and healthy, you're fine. And, and I can tell you the root system is great because if you look, you can see all those new beautiful white root fibers. That was inside the bag that we shipped them in. So the root fibers are actually growing even though they're not even in soil. So they're doing fine even though we have some kind of kind of lanky uh, tops here. They're going to be totally fine. So all we need to do is with asparagus, it's very important to dig a nice deep hole. We're gonna dig a nice deep hole here and we want to bury the plant no deeper than about an inch above the crown. The crown is the top of the root system. So if I bring you in close here, this is the root system. When the root system stops, this is the crown. This little, uh, the top of this plant here is the crown. So we want the soil no further than an inch above the crown. So uh, that's just something that we wanna do so we don't have what's called crown rot. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to splay out the roots. Now this would be an ideal time to fertilize if you, uh, if you have a fertilizer on hand that you wanna use. We use Trifecta, we already applied Trifecta to all of our beds. We use Trifecta Plus fertilizer on all of our plants, but a good all-purpose fertilizer is going to be something that you're going to wanna to use because that helps give them nutrients right away that's gonna help them come out of dormancy and uh, just be healthier. So uh, now is when you'd apply your, your fertilizer if you're gonna do that and you wanna splay out the roots kind of like a mop, you kind of just splat it on the ground. You don't, want all the, you don't want all the roots just all clustered up like this. You wanna give them some space. So now that we've got them in the ground, we're just going to gently cover them up with soil. Leave those tops out just like that, totally fine. They're going to start photosynthesizing and, and they'll, uh, they'll turn green in no time. So there we go, one planted. And now with asparagus, you want to plant them. You want to space uh, your asparagus out uh, about a foot and a half, two feet apart, because they will get really big and they need some space to sprawl. So uh, we'll space out. Uh, we'll put a second plant here, and we'll get about four plants uh, in about uh, seven, eight square feet or so. Um, so that is uh, that's really all you need to know to uh, what to do uh, when you get your plants uh, that are bare root in the in the mail. Um, obviously, we do have growing guides on all these things from asparagus to, uh, to raspberries, blackberries, even fruit trees. So make sure to check out the complete growing guides on those for more information. Uh, this just so happened to be, this just happened to be something that I was planting. So I figured I'd show you at least uh, me planting it in the ground. But um, like I said, the biggest thing is soak them. Make sure they're uh, make sure they're still green by clipping the, the top if you if you wish to do so if you're you know if you're confident that they're fine um, you don't have to do that that's an optional step but uh, you know assessing there's no damage after shipment soaking them in the water and getting them in soil three easy steps um, and I uh, one last thing that I was going to add is a lot of you ask well Luke what happens if my weather is still cold what happen, what happens if I still have a threat of frost get them in the ground because of the fact they're dormant they're not going to realize anything is different. They're gonna stay dormant until the weather is warm enough for them to sprout. But you gotta get them in the ground so that the roots don't dry out. And that way when they, um, 
when they come out of dormancy, you can, uh, you can have them growing for you. So uh, just get them in the ground, even if you're in a zone that's, you know, still has some threat of frost, get them in the ground. So that's really all there is. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I'm going to get inside because uh, I'm, I'm getting soaked here. <laughs> all right. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you all on the next episode. Hopefully a drier one. <laughs> grow bigger, go home, everyone. Bye.